So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity that we are um, making some changes in the assignment to start just doing a quick recap what we have been doing in this class. And uh, so, you are grasping the big picture. You are not, let's say, lost in the detail and don't see what we are doing and why we are doing and of course, in the time frame, which uh, is in the realm of one course of uh, 12 weeks. So I'm going to share a Word document, which I very fast put notes for today. I should have passed this by um, in PowerPoint, and it should have been much better, but sorry. So very quick, in this course, we started with big data. Uh, understanding um, the main issue related with big data, and then we delineated that uh, the most, uh, most challenges are unstructured data, and from them, one of them was text data. So we spent a few weeks in going to this point, going to text mining, we did some uh, text classification, you did assignment with R, and we almost work in, in this central part of uh, text mining. Um, also, we focus uh, in the challenges of natural language processing, which is um, also, I have here summarized the main issues and the main, um, let's say, techniques. Uh, to do the national uh, language processing. And you uh, remember we said that the m main issue is that um, natural language processing rely on context and we have to interpret this when possible in context and context might extend beyond given document, beyond given time, beyond given uh, time frame. So all these challenges, we explore it, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, we went beyond that, not uh, pure natural language processing, but as a base, apply it to what is um, Watson cognitive computing. We explore several uh, different application in what's of cognitive computing, and I think you got some idea about the challenge of working with unstructured data, just moving to this new paradigm, which is uh, cognitive computing. So what we are doing in 12 weeks, you understand, is we are trying to expose you as much as possible to all related technology to the main issue. So when you go to, let's say, to a project, to work project in, uh, in your workplace, you can go more in deep in the specific topic in which you are going to work. But you have some preparation about the challenges, about possible tools you can use and techniques, analytical techniques you can use, and how to interpret results. So, that is the main, um, uh, let's say, the main um, objective of uh, the course. When we started the course, I'm repeating here one uh, graphical representation, which very closely represents what we do in this class. Why? We have the traditional business approach to deal with data and the big data approach with the big difference in the big data approach, instead to ask the IT department, given the business, um, let's say the business case to be sol uh, solved, to build the infrastructure to solve this problem, and let's say to build the infrastructure to, uh, um, to deploy a database, uh, data warring house, and to run reports, that is the traditional um, approach to deal with data. In the realm of big data, we have, uh, let's say, more capability and more challenges. So the approach is different. The approach is you have given in any company 
that is the tendency. Uh, let's say uh, the true big data approach, many companies already are targeting and have this implemented. Um, the infrastructure, the platform, the information technology platform is available in most of the cases already in the cloud, which is very convenient. In the cloud, we started just uh, storing data because it's convenient, uh, but um, then we move uh, with the advancement of uh, cloud computing to doing processing in the cloud and going to platform as a service and software as a service, different uh, cloud deployment. So uh, what today, uh, the today paradigm chief in information technology infrastructure for any companies, you first have given all the platform with all possible tool which the company uh, expect to, uh, to use and accessible for different team, including the team of data analysts and data scientists. So when your team is given the business problem to solve, you go to this available uh, infrastructure with different software tools, and you try to solve the problem. So this is mostly exploration. You start exploring different, different software. Um, uh, is, can, can I ask everyone please uh, stay in mute so we have better uh, quality of the session. So uh, after uh, you first explore uh, the existing infrastructure for the available tool which can help you solve this business problem. Sometimes not everything as a data scientist, data analyst you may need is there and of course you have to make additional requests but most of the things are already there. So uh, at this point the two paradigm work in parallel. We cannot say that even in the most advanced company, we have a uh, part traditional approach because there is a lot of money and infrastructure spent in any of the company and the new approach with existing, let's say, infrastructure, uh, a platform, um, cloud as a platform, cloud as a service, and um, software as a service. Uh, but at this point, this is uh, the existing state of the art, how data analysts perform, uh, uh, perform the job. Of course, this is not in any, in any place. This is just, uh, let's say, the tendency. And since you are in master degree program, you have to grasp the state of the art, the tendency, and the future. So trying to deal with all of this in the realm of uh, courses, which each of the courses in the program is 12 week, the program is oriented, since we are in the big data uh, society, is oriented to expose you as many tools as possible to support the topic of study in the course. And as you remember, all over the program, in each course you've been exposed to two, three different uh, tools to do analytics. Uh, some of them open source, some of them proprietary. So, um, and of course, you, uh, you go to certain deep of understand, of, uh, let's say, um, fluency in these two, because they are two, they are supporting you to show you're grasping the topic and that you can deliver understanding by doing small or more extensive project. And in order to do the project, you have to use this tool. So exposure to many tools is given because of the approach to deal with big data today. You will have to deal with uh, in in many cases, you will have to deal with different tools in order to solve um, uh, a business problem. Of course, uh, we don't expect that you are fluent in deep in each of these tools, 
no one expects this for the short period of time, for two years program, but you are exposed and you have some average fluence in all these two you've been exposed. So at the day you finish the program, besides the topics of study in uh, data analytics, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, you have approved in order to get your degree, you have hands-on experience in several tools, even not in deep in deep. So that is the idea. And because of this, uh, um, most of the tools using in this program, uh, you have been using in the, the cloud. I mean, I'm talking about Tableau, Decision First, SaaS, um, all these software uh, are in cloud environment and you have access to them uh, from, uh, from your computer. In addition to that, uh, you use several open source, um, let's say free open source tools like R and Python, which uh, you install in your computer or MySQL. So given that, you understand why advancing more in this program, going already to what is big data analytics, we have to do everything in the cloud. There is no way uh, the, the tools for uh, big data analytics you can install in your personal computer and you work on them like you are installing RStudio. I think everyone understands that. And this is the big picture. Um, so um, after, um, after wrapping up what we are doing in the last few weeks, in the last three weeks actually, we've been uh, to the, let's say, what is recognized to the uh, first uh, technology for big data to accommodate the requirement of big data in that made possible uh, big data analytic is uh, Hadoop with several, uh, let's say I summarize here the most important application which Hadoop made possible. And the main, um, we've been talking about the main uh, uh, component in the Hadoop ecosystem. And uh, you remember that um, this is, um, it, uh, this is, um, open source um, under Apache, Hadoop, Apache distribution of Hadoop with the main component of Hadoop distributed file system, uh, MapReduce, and a few other, um, few other components like Hive, Peak, Scope, and HBase. So these are the main components which uh, actually are under open source Apache Hadoop distribution. But beside that, this is, uh, you, can, uh, you, you can think about um, that this is perfect. This is um, open source, free, but in order to install and to have access to install, not only to deploy is the best, is the best, um, um, uh, where in order to set up Hadoop ecosystem accessible for use from, uh, for you as a developer or uh, as an analyst, you would need uh, computer capacity which are beyond any personal computer. Not because you cannot install in your power, uh, powerful um, personal computer, let's say, uh, you can uh, set up a cluster of two nodes. But after that, what? And the point is, whatever you are going to do with big data, the minimum is several components or in the Hadoop ecosystem. We already have seen this. So because of this, naturally appeared uh, a number of vendors which provide product, product that integrate the Hadoop Apache uh, distribution with additional, um, let's say, um, product which make enterprise, uh, let's say, solution easier. 
and uh, I have summarized. Um, in the classroom, we have uh, a lot of resources posted. I expect you already at this point have uh, overview uh, at least what is uh, pertinent to big data in Hadoop. Uh, so what I'm talking about in detail, you can find most reading in the classroom. Here I just summarized so you get the, the big picture what we are doing and what, why we are doing this way. First, why we are doing this in the cloud, I think is clear. And secondly, why not just Apache Hadoop, but uh, we are doing this, for instance, in the proprietary platform uh, Bluemix, uh, which is the cloud environment of IBM. Besides IBM, they are different vendor platform, including Cloudera, which has two different distributions. One is open source, but really the one for enterprise is um, with on top a uh, um, very similar strategy which uh, uh, IBM uses to provide enterprise with more powerful tool because um, uh, if you want uh, to be productive as a company working in certain um, direction, in order to deploy in top to the open source Apache Hadoop ecosystem, the all necessary application, you will have to invest uh, a lot of uh, time, software, uh, uh, software engineer time in order to get um, uh, let's say a platform already ready to do some application in the area you are working. That's why a business for many company like the one I have here, I have uh, Action beside Cloudera and IBM, XSO, uh, Map R, Mark Logic, Pentacles, SAS, and on and on and on. So it's clear that just because Apache Hadoop um, is open source and, any, uh, and anyone can contribute, all these, uh, let's say, vendors, which on top of the, um, they have um, products which are based on the open source Apache Hadoop, but they are enhanced and make a most powerful enterprise tool. So for the purpose of our study, this is, let's say, very similar to the situation you may have in the organization you will work or you are working already. And if you don't have this similar situation, so the organization in which you are working is going to develop some additional on top of Apache Hadoop uh, open source some additional, uh, let's say, layer which will make adaptation to what you want to do as an enterprise. I think I, uh, by, by this I make clear where, uh, about the big picture, and you already have seen this uh, slide, which is the IBM Vision, uh, the big data platform, which is based in most of the things we are talking about, they uh, try to include everything there, a solution for any type of problem, um, let's say big data, just um, size of data or stream of data or, or data warring house. So given that one possible, um, let's say, scenario is this, when you have uh, all type of data, stream data coming to one part of the enterprise architecture, other part coming to the Hadoop map reduce to the Hive age base, or communicated with the data warring house. On top of this is, of course, the data analytic part, which is the part we are interested in this class. So everything to the left, which we are discussing and reading and trying to get better grasp, is so you as a data analyst most effectively can use the infrastructure which 
um, which uh, is available for you in order to solve the business problem you are targeting to solve. So one of the tendency in all these different um, vendor is if you see I put few words in front of some of them, one of the tendency in the uh, last, let's say, three years, um, in the beginning, uh, Hadoop, uh, in the beginning, Hadoop ecosystem uh, uh, required a lot of software engineer with Java uh, skill, uh, programming uh, everything, uh, programming map reduced with Java skill, and which, uh, in order, uh, with the increased adoption of Hadoop in, in many enterprise the Java skill fluency is not so wide uh, available. Moreover, for data management, for 30 years, the standard skill is ANSI SQL, employed in different vendor, in different data management system, but it's the SQL. So the idea started slowly to boil how, uh, because this is a contradiction between what is distributed uh, file system, columnar database like uh, HBase, and SQL, totally different paradigm. But several companies working in this direction already um, uh, have different solution of Hadoop or in Hadoop SQL. So I have summarized here, you can find more reading in our classroom, if you don't know where exactly, uh, you can ask and I can point you to the right direction. And here I have summarized this desire, which finally is coming, let's say, in the last three years, giving fruit that they are many different um, vendors which provide support so um, you can manage your data using uh, the common SQL skills. That's why we started with the big SQL of IBM InfoSphere Big Insight. We started with big SQL, then the, uh, which is, uh, let's say, this is not um, ANSI SQL because it's, uh, um, but it's very close. So if you already know um, SQL, you can very easily and naturally grasp what, how to manage your data logically, let's say. This is a very powerful tool. SQL is very powerful uh, uh, tool because it's just giving you um, a tool to manage your data in Hadoop distributed system without caring how data are stored, how data are organized. Just you see this as a logical presentation of your data. And the uh, the next uh, of course the next uh, plan was to uh, finish with uh, one very powerful application also of uh, IBM BC Insight which was big sheets but you understand what happened we are doing all the assignment on uh, uh, let's say in on production industry platform which is Bluemix. We are giving this free access as an academia, so you, we are up to the last, last thing which are in industry. Of course, in a single class, it's not, um, it's not possible to go to different platform, but at least one, which is in this case uh, what uh, was made possible, what was Bluemix, it's not big difference going to any other uh, vendor, uh, going to Azure or to Amazon Cloud, very similar with different, let's say, different idea. From point of view of analytics, it seems, because I have explored three of them, uh, um, um, Professor Wu is also working also in other university with all this platform, and from developer point of view, they have different advantage. But from analytical point of view, right now, right now, for all these platforms, it seems Bluemix offer very good, uh, let's say, capacity to do analytical work. 
unfortunately, we couldn't finish uh, the last task, which was a big sheet. Why? Because this is the way any industry platform is. They constantly update software, and right now, in the middle of the semester, um, Analytic for Hadoop was removed, and the new version, my understanding is for what I know, is going to be in the 21st. But for us, it's going to be too late to go back to Bluemix and do big shit because we, big, big shits, because we have to move on. Uh, we have um, other and most advanced topics like Spark, which is the last thing in big data and in doing analytics with the Spark uh, machine learning um, uh, capability. So that's why we are not going to stop here. But uh, as a substitution to this assignment, I just uh, went back here to this, uh, let's say, where is the, okay. I went here and I said, why we don't go to this part of the scheme, which is also offered in Bluemix, and why we don't explore uh, Dash DB with which we can do very nice analytics. And let me tell you, DashDB is powerful, um, a very powerful tool. I didn't plan initially in the course, but the assignment was ready because I'm already planning this for summer. So don't think uh, we were able to put this assignment just in two hours and bam, gone. No. This already, we have been teach, uh, talk, uh, thinking about this for summer. Just... Uh, you can deliver certain amount of, uh, let's say, of um, material in a 12 weeks. So uh, in order to deliver this, you have to uh, squash, uh, you, you have to delete uh, or you have to uh, compress some other part of the course. And this is what I'm planning to do in summer. So in summer, students will have uh, to explore more time and to provide some original analytical solution with Dash DB. Um, the assignment is not difficult, but the power of Dash DB is incredible. So I hope you already read they are three different documents posted in the class. I extracted from one of them the most important, let's say, um, the most important and most representative graphical representation of what Dash DB is. So, um, so you grasp the idea, graphical idea is much more powerful than any reading, any, let's say, any text. Um, just, you can see the power of, uh, to read and write data from to all this connection, uh, for da dash db in Bluemix, you see the connection to um, to SAS, SPSS, different databases, and even Watson Analytics. So I'm not going to talk more of this because there is no. Um, this is very high level tool, very analytical. Uh, so uh, just reading what is there and the instruction for the assignment, I think you can do something original and interesting. In addition, in the classroom, we have posted um, a step-by-step, -step, uh, let's say, walkthrough to DashDB. If you run this with the example, because the walkthrough is with real example, you can get idea, illuminate yourself, and with everything you see here, I want to see something really nice from your part. So I will be giving three more days for this assignment. It's not going to do on Sunday, just to make sure you provide the analytical part. I know the technical part is not difficult. You can do in a, in few e, uh, in few hours the technical part of this assignment. The point of view is find I, something and interpret and show me some original idea what you can do with Dash DB. Um, uh, before going to the assignment specifically, I would like that Professor Wu uh, 
uh, if you would please add because of course I miss I, I I'm going very fast perhaps I miss some important point and I will appreciate you add to everything I try just to wrap the main idea of the course and then we can go to the specific of the assignment. John, can you hear me? Oh, here. Yeah, Elena, I just changed it to my earphone. Oh, okay, good. So th thank, you. thank you, Elena. Um, and as, as you know, the point is um, um, actually the IBM is trying to catch up with the other competitors like Cloudera, Hortonworks, and Amazon AWS, um, the Microsoft Azure. That's why they uh, move very fast. So that's why they kind of delete the service, free service of Big Sheet and Big SQL. But fortunately, uh, Dash DB is another uh, interesting service because that is a um, uh, the data warehouse, but that runs on um, MPP, that is the traditional parallel computing. And also it provides uh, uh, visual and uh, visual data analysis tool, uh, especially with R. So if you work on uh, Dash DB assignment, I'm pretty sure uh, you can analyze the uh, Twitter data in um, like a popular issue. For example, uh, in, in the example, you can only see uh, UMUC as a um, uh, Twitter data, but you could I mean, for your assignment, you could use, for example, Kung Fu Panda 3, uh, Jutopia, and see how people, uh, uh, what, what is the people's opinion, what is the people's sentiment. So I'm pretty sure you can enjoy that uh, that assignment. Uh, Elena, do you, do you think this is kind of okay, or you need you want me to uh, go over other stuff as well? Uh, by the way, in the walk walkthrough, um, uh, when you work on R script, I think the data frame that is automatically generated from uh, Dash DB, uh, you act, I mean, when there is a table, uh, and I mean, when there is a command for table, uh, you actually need to use the table named the tweets because that has the uh, gender data and message action data. So you have to find out a uh, Twitch table data frame. And one more thing, data frame is very famous approach. That is to copy, uh, that is to make a kind of object that is like a table. So in database, you have a table and in, in a code like owl and a spark, uh, they have a function named the data frame that is an object to um, uh, make a kind of copy of the table. So you can easily play with the data frame as a kind of a table. Mm -hmm. uh, Elena, do you? No, I are, think are is, I would prefer, uh, because we've been talking too much, I mm -hmm. think it's better that uh, since we have uh, uh, a lot of people here, Mm -hmm. Better to try to answer questions. Oh, okay, that sounds good. So whenever you have a question, uh, let us know. Just unmute yourself and speak. And if you don't want to speak, post in the chat. I don't see anything in the chat because I don't see. Uh, uh, I don't see uh, unless Elena. Would you like to tell something? Because I don't see. Uh, need after the vault through detail it to repeat the vault through in the uh, mm -hmm. in the web uh, here in the web session. But if you have something in addition to the vault through, yeah, well, something important that I have observed is that after you load the data, the Twitter data in the tables, you're gonna see the statistics page. Very important. You need to take the screenshot of that page because. Once you close that page, at least I have not been able to figure out how to how, how to get back to that page. 
So you might want to take take a screenshot right away because there is no way that I could figure out to get that page back. Yeah. So that's one thing. I hear some noise in the background. No, we have several people. Uh, Mary. Oh. Yeah. What page you did you want to from? speak? Okay. Go ahead. What page didn't come up, Mary? She mentioned the page did not come up, but what page? Sorry, my mute was on. Um, the statistics I page. I loaded the data. Yeah. Yes. I, I loaded the data, and when I clicked next, when I clicked next, it went somewhere else. It didn't go to the statistics page, and clicking back didn't take me there, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I tried every single oh, what, menu option. What step you were at? Because on the very last step, right? It was my, my own, own, own data. Uh, Elena, would you like to share screen uh, screen and show this uh, this step or? Sure, sure. Then I I'm gonna I I'm gonna need to run it on a use a different topic. That's right. Because okay, so I'm logged in here. I I need to, I need to share the screen okay. to dashboard. Okay, so I need to share, right? How do uh, I? Just a second, you will oh. be sharing. Yeah. So where is that thing here? Meeting. Mary, actually, if you finish it, uh, loading, like there is a fifth, there is a five steps. After five, fifth step, you can okay. see the chart is automatically shown up. Oops. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Oh, another thing here is that uh. Since I'm on this page right now, service credentials. This is very important. Write that down because you're going to need it for R. And also, if you are, and the one thing I know is I tried it from Watson. It is possible to use to analyze data stored in DarcyB in Watson. So you may want to write down this because you're going to need it to launch R, right? This login name and password. And another thing, very important, the browser. If you want to launch the R Studio, you cannot use the Internet Explorer. Use either Chrome or Firefox, right? So now we're gonna, I'm gonna launch the service. I'm gonna go back here, and launch. Okay, it's gonna take some time to come up, but here, patience is a key. So. Yeah, it's taking its time. I'm not sure. Sometimes it takes. Sometimes it's faster. Sometimes it's a little bit slower, depending on the number of users in the system. But a very last page. Uh, I'm wondering if I still have this open. Yes, I do. Oops. Nope, not good. I'll have to reopen it. Something went wrong with the memory. So anyway, basically the last the way I'm gonna go in the classroom and see if I can the very last page that you're gonna there are several steps, right? And the very, very last step is gonna show you the statistics. So you want to make sure that you save this save that step right here. I'm going in. Oh, I have to download this. Let's see let's see if that thing finished. Yes, it did. Okay, so basically what I do here, right, I'll go load, and I'm going to go from Twitter, right? So that's a thing. Another important thing is that here the service is calling a service, right? Twitter data is another service. So now let's pick something else. What topic are we going to pick? Okay, so, oops. Come on. So let's see, create. No, not create, we're gonna use existing one. I'm gonna click next, All right? 
And the reason I'm using an existing one because I already added something. So now I'm going to put the, the hashtag. And let's see if we do something like... I'm not sure if it will find something, but... Oops, let's see. Or let's do this. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. And now I'm going to go... First, I can get the tweet count. Oh, there we go. This is just to check. Okay, so I'm getting I'm getting data for this one. So let's go. Yeah, yeah it's gonna take too long. Oh, okay. Well, I think this is going to take too long, but uh, I guess uh, Mary answer is not yet there. Maybe she need to 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 do additional, uh, let's say, follow up uh, with Elena. I see uh, other question here. I don't know who is Mi. Can you speak? Yeah, there is other person uh, asking question. Go ahead. Oh, there we go. This one is short. Hi, this is Mike. I know that we only have like 17 minutes left, but um, I just was curious to know, like, as an analyst, as a data analyst, as a BI, um, mm -hmm. as a BI specialist, as a data scientist, as a manager, um, how do you drive a, an analytic-centered culture in the organization, especially when the organization um, isn't exposed to these newer technologies that have, you know, kind of been formed in the last decade? Um, as a manager viewpoint, um, like how do you how do you just drive this culture where the organization is it really gets on board with analytics and trying to find weaknesses in the system or trying to find opportunities or trying to find um, just any kind of opportunity that would help leverage the business and the data um, to, to help really just make the cus uh, make make the company succeed. Well, there is no uh, silver recipe for this, uh, Mike. Um, this is very extensive. You guys know how to, how to very, drive an analytics culture? Uh, I would say uh, the most important is there is need. If there is business need in the company, you will be able to drive this. Because if there is something where the business is need, and someone from the company, let's say small group, can show that the analytic can provide, uh, let's say, benefits, this is the push with the company need. I, I would say this is like uh, uh, you need some initial in, uh, impulse in order to get started in this direction. And the most important is business need. Business need and a solution to this very small problem, let's put it this way. Everything should start small. You cannot start uh, talking about uh, uh, Hadoop and all this last technology, NoSQL, big data. You have to talk about the way the, your company is. And any company, it doesn't matter how big, how small, you have different business problems. Pick one and find some, let's say, uh, knowledgeable people with skills in your company, or even if needed, you can, uh, let's say, uh, use consultant for this to solve this specific small uh, problem because showing solution with analytics, this is the driving force, and everything should start small. With small, you show, show the analytics with uh, certain investment can give you return 10, and, and you have to show a return of investment. I mean, uh, you invested this, and actually uh, uh, the result of this, um, let's say, small project are above any expectation in, every, in all the direction. And, of course, this is the... Uh, this is the driving force, and it should start small. I don't know, um, John Walk, do you have uh, any other? Uh, because we cannot uh, talk sure, about sure. it. Yes. Uh, in my point of view, the data analysis and data science is not new. That has been uh, done by many big companies. But, you know, uh, these days, because of uh, 
like uh, social media data and sensor data and many data, they became public and we can share those data. And also fortunately, because of uh, Google, uh, we got new technology called the, uh, the Hadoop or the ecosystems and others and Spark as well. Therefore, nowadays, any small company can uh, analyze the data and find out big insights. So there are many startup company in uh, West Coast and East Coast. To, uh, they want to make some profit by providing uh, insight from the the data. So, for example, one company one company who analyzes the movie data and try to find out when is the right time to open that movie. Uh, only providing that information, that company makes a lot of a, like a profit. So now, uh, th th that's why many schools try to open this kind of a, a programs because there are need. And but that question you ask is not actually for us. That should that you need to ask your your friends or your uh, executive committees because they are the one who actually already know the, where the budget or the money are there. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Yeah, it, it finished really quickly, and this is a page I was talking about. So you can here you can see how, how many tweets are over time. So this is sort of like a, you can call it time series analysis. Here is paper location, and this time I search for UMCP. So here it is, and here it's giving me the related hashtags. And here it's showing me how many positive and negative posts. Right. So if I wanted to, I could even do an analysis. I can compare UMCP with UMUC. I could do that. So basically, this page. Take a screenshot of this page because after you close it, after you click finish, I'm not even sure how to return to this page. I tried, but I could not find a way. So anyway, and it, it created five tables. Yeah. So if you click on this tab, you're going to see. So what I did was I prefixed my table names with um. Uh oh, I forgot how to spell. I should spell UMCP. Well, it's a spelling error, but that's okay. As long as I know what I name my tables, I'll be good. So, now here, uh, let me show you something. Here it is connection information. This part is important because if you want to uh, connect from another application, to DashDB, what what we, you have here is your the host name and port. All of this part, this part is going to be the same for everyone. But what's going to be different is this username and password. So if you guys interested at your leisure, you can even play around in uh, Watson. But the difference, I already I already created the connection. So what you need to do is you just go here, you go upload data, and you pick DashDB right here as your source. And then what you'll do is you're going to specify your username that you copied, and I'll show you where to copy from, right? And a password. Isn't that nice? You can The data that you loaded, you can analyze it from another application, and I believe you can do it from Spark as well. So from Spark and from uh, Watson, but somebody with an admin rights, which is me, had to set it up. And I set it up already, so now it's going to give me all those things that I have access to. Oh, it, it's a lot, because where do you think this comes from? There are sample tables. And see this? There, this are the tables that I just created. I made the type in there, but... The point is here is everything that I just loaded and yeah it just 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 something interesting you can explore at your leisure okay okay so. i i want to point to something uh here even though the walkthrough is with tweet data 
use your imagination. It's not necessary that you use Twitter data. There are many other options. You can use other data, not just Twitter data. You saw all the capability. This is just idea, but you are, uh, we are looking for any original and good idea uh, since um, the tool is very, let's say, um, uh, powerful. You can do very, a lot of stuff without too much, uh, without programming actually. You can do a lot. Um, so think about not just Twitter data. And we don't have to explore all detail, uh, Elena, now because yes. they they haven't started many of them. So yeah, if, uh, only just, if there are questions. Yeah. I was just going to say there are some custom, not custom, but there are some built-in, some sample scripts in there. So mm -hmm. if they want to look at and if there is something they want to reuse in their project, more than welcome. But there are some sample scripts. Where? And here, sample project. Okay. Oh, okay. Because Good. because this is basically what they call it an R project, and you can just click here, and this is a script. So you have options. You can run you can run the script in here. You just click submit, it will run, and the output will show here, and the plot will show on this top. There are several options. You can run it here, or you can click on R Studio. It will launch the R Studio, and you would need to enter the Login and password that I mentioned earlier. But keep in mind, if you want to use our studio, you need to use either Firefox browser or Chrome. It won't work in Explorer. So, uh, and also remember that running this star, uh, thing with already given script is not time consuming. Time consuming is writing the report or your analysis. This is the important part. Like in any of the assignment up to now and in any of the remaining assignment in this class. Because the most important thing is not what, not just the output of the program, you took screenshot and then what I want to see in your report is analysis and uh, suggestion regarding what you did, what you see, what can differently can be done and so on and on and on. Analytical thinking. It, uh, I like it. It's very quick. <laughs> I just click the button in a few seconds. It gives me the visualization. It, it, it's really fast. And same thing R2J. It just, it just, it just, it just so fast. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, um, I think uh, many problem is not solved or yes. No. Well, any other question? Uh, let yes. me tell you in meantime, uh, is there a question who is talking? Are you? Yes. Yes, yes. I am. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, um, considering the time we have on our hands, um, there's something that we, uh, we, we are going to try. Uh, is, there any, is there anything wrong if we use the tweet um, data? Nothing wrong. Okay. I just want something original. Okay. But nothing wrong with tweet data. Okay. Yeah, but, but you're going to put your topic, right? I'm going to put exactly. something there. Like, what's your hobby? Pick anything that you like. Like, maybe you like baseball or maybe you like... Yeah, well, I understand that. I understand. I'm just, you know, yeah. I know I got to put something on my own. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure because um, it was saying something like we can explore and do something, but I'm looking at the time, you know. Oh so well, we it, run out of time. It could be anything you're collecting. You might be interested in what people say about it. Okay. Th thank you. Sure. And, uh, okay, you will have uh, for this task until Wednesday, I formally will change in the assignment folder the due day. But uh, keep in mind, there is no, I mean, it's not benefit extending this much more because what is coming is very important. Spark, and we have very interesting assignment there. There are many new stuff to uh, to learn, and this is, let's say, the hot topic in 
analytic and in big data analytic is part today. So we cannot take more time on, on this ta uh, task than three days. I know big shit is going to come later and you will be able, let's say, for yourself to complete the assignment, but not already this is gra grading. So we cannot uh, wait until this is available. I think everyone understands, and everyone understands that this is just the way the environment we are working is. It's not built only for us, it's built to do uh, frequent, uh, let's say, uh, update and get the most powerful tool uh, which satisfy most uh, industry needs. Other questions? If there is no more, more questions, yes? Uh. I think we uh, we then uh, end the today uh, meeting, and as you understand, the way we've been conducting this, as necessity arrives, we are doing this. When we start Spark, we are going to do another one to uh, walk you through the topic. Uh, professor who is going to give you lecture and get you started with the following assignment. And for today, I think it's all, and I will say good evening to everyone, and I look forward for excellent reports on this assignment.